In lesson 16, we are going to be looking at more symmetry and describing more symmetries of various shapes. So here's your 16.1 warm up, taking a look at these figures on page 111 and determining which one does not belong. So think about it, think about which one you think doesn't belong, pause the video and come back. Okay, so you certainly could have chosen any of these um, figures in here, just have to have a justification of why the one that you chose doesn't belong. So maybe you, um, maybe you chose letter A because it's the only one with a curved side. Um, maybe you chose letter B because it's the only one with tick marks. Could have even said only circle, the only triangle. Um, Maybe you said um, letter C because it's the only one with parallel lines marked. Maybe you said D because it's the only one that kind of goes in, has a vertex that's going in versus all these look like they're pointing out. Also the only shaded one. Maybe even could have said um, that shape A has reflective symmetry, okay, and rotational symmetry. Um, that B has only um, one reflection symmetry versus this one has infinite reflection, reflective symmetry and C and D have none. So it's the only one with one. Um, maybe for C you said that it's it has rotational symmetry and the letters um, are going counterclockwise. So if you said A, B, C, D went this way versus A, B, C. So these ones are going clockwise. These ones are going counterclockwise. These ones are going counterclockwise. So a lot of different things um, that you could have said. D also doesn't have a point A. All the other ones have a point labeled A. So a ton of different things that you could have come up with, maybe you came up with more that I didn't say, that's fine. Um, all right, then in um, the 16.2 activity, this again is going to be an activity that we create a visual display. So you'll have to ask um, your teacher how you're going to make this portion up in creating a visual display. So be sure to talk to them. So then we're gonna move to 16.3, which is on page 13 in your student workbook. Um, and we're gonna look at um, writing des descriptions. So you're going to look at um, a student description and then you're gonna um, create your own or help with that. So the student conversation is on page 113. So it's a discussion between Claire and Lynn so go ahead and read that on page 113. Uh, I'm just going to read that for you here. So it says, Claire says, last class I thought the parallelogram would have reflection symmetry. I tried using the diagonal as the line of symmetry, but it didn't work. Um, let me get this here. So I thought it had reflection symmetry, it didn't work. So now I'm doubting that it has rotation symmetry. So remember reflection symmetry is where it folds over a line of symmetry. Rotation symmetry is where it rotates between zero and 360 degrees back on itself around its center point. So then Lynn says, I thought that too at first, but now I think the parallelogram does have rotation symmetry. Here, look at this, and Lynn drew this picture, or this diagram. So how could Lynn describe to Claire the symmetry that she sees? So what did she do here? Okay, why did she draw this on? And what is she trying to explain to Lynn? So go ahead and pause the video and think about this question and write down how she could describe this to Claire. Okay, so when you're trying to describe this and you're writing down descriptions, so you're going to want to get some vertices in here or some labeled vertices in here so that you can start talking about this in specific terms. So I'm going to go ahead and go over here and write down 
um, some vertices here. So A, we'll call this one B, C, D. So now this parallelogram has a name. So you can start it with any letter you want, and then you just have to go around in order. So you can say, I'm going to say A, B, C, D. You could have gone the other way and said A, D, C, B, or started with any other vertice. Um, and then I'm also going to name this point in here, this center point of these circles that she drew. Um, so how could Lynn um, describe to Claire the symmetry she sees? So one way that she could do this is by talking about so we're talking about rotation, right? So we're talking about how do we rotate these. So notice that we see that point A, um, sorry, point A and point C are both on this outer circle. Okay, so if we followed this path around, okay, that's a 180 degree path across that circle. Can kind of check that out if I wanted to draw in a connection from A to C. You see how that's a diameter, goes straight through E. Okay, so it goes along, rotates 180 degrees. And then if you look, you can see that B and D are also on the on the same circle. So if I rotate, whoops, if I rotate um B around to D. Let's see if that's the same movement. So here's B going around to D. So it looks like again a 180 degree rotation. Let me just make sure because 180 degrees would be along the diameter and the diameter would go through that center. So we see that happening again. So this rotation here is 180 degrees. So if Lynn was going to start describing this Okay, and then you have the other 180 to get C to A and B to D. So Lynn could have said um, that she's got the center of the parallelogram, okay, labeled E. Um, and then she's going to rotate. So rotating parallelogram A, B, C, D 180 degrees. Whoops. Um, either clockwise or counterclockwise. Mine I did clockwise, um, but it'll end up the same spot. So rotating ABCD 180 degrees clockwise will um, take point A to point C and point C to point A. It will also take point B to point D and point D to point B, okay? So that's gonna rotate, so that's gonna move each of those. So if, then, so that means it's taking, so A goes to C, B goes to D. So it's taking this um, segment AB, so it's taking segment AB and mapping it to C, D, because A went to C, B went to D, okay? And then it's mapping um, B, C is then rotating to D, A. So it's going to rotate that back on itself. So it's going to take all of those around there. So let me make this a little bit smaller here. Okay, now this isn't the only description you could write. This is just mine. You could also say something about the segments rotating. So if you wanted to say rotating 180 degrees, that that will rotate segment AB over to CD and CD over to AB. So if you wanted to be talking about the segments, you certainly could. So this is not the only way to describe this. Okay, so then summarizing what you would have done in this lesson. So when does a rotation show a figure has rotation symmetry? Um, remembering the two rotation degrees, need it needs to be between 0 and 360. 
but it can't include zero. So you wouldn't say a zero degree rotation and you wouldn't say a 360 degree rotation. Just needs to be in between those. So go ahead and try and sketch a shape um, for which the following angles of rotation create symmetry. So see if you can get one that has 180 degree rotation symmetry, 90 degree rotation symmetry, and 45 degree rotation symmetry. Then you can compare these with your classmates when you um, are back with them. Write a transformation statement for each sketch. So as you're doing it, okay, remember um, back to how we describe rotation symmetry. So make sure that you have um, a center, a direction, and an angle when you're describing um, the rotation here. So using these angles, which direction um, and around where. So center probably of the shape. So when we're doing rotational symmetry of a shape, you'd be using the center point. So you'd say the center of the shape, okay? So a 180 degree rotation around the center this far, um, this far. Uh, if you're doing 90, uh, 90 degree rotation clockwise or counterclockwise, because it matters now when it's not 180, clockwise or counterclockwise around the center of the figure. So take a look um, at the bottom of page 13 in this summary. We see that they have given us the definition again of rotation symmetry. So remember that there's rotation symmetry. If there is a rotation between zero and 360 degrees that takes the shape onto itself. So then they've given you the hex, a regular hexagon has many angles that work to create rotation symmetry. Here's one of them, so 60 degrees. So if we rotate it 60 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on which way you wanna go, it will rotate back on itself. So if we follow it this way, okay, that's gonna rotate back on itself. Are there more? Okay, so what other ones are there? So let me see if I can get a hexagon drawn about the same size as this one. Okay, so what other rotations? So if I took this and rotated it 60 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise, or if I rotated it um, clockwise, so what other angles could you do? So what other rotations could you do? And let me get um, a line drawn in here so we can watch it. What other angles of rotation could we rotate this at? Whoops. Okay, so here's that 60 degree rotation. Oh, I put together the wrong things. Hang on here, okay. Okay, I have the right things connected now. Okay, so here's the 60 degree rotation. Okay, I have the right things connected now. So here's the 60 degree rotation. Okay, so what else could you do? So 60 degrees, that was 60 degrees counterclockwise. You could also do 60 degrees clockwise. Okay, here would be 60, 120, that worked. Or another one of 180, or another 60 degrees at 240. So any of those clockwise or counterclockwise would work for our rotational symmetry for a hexagon. All right, then your cool down is gonna say quadrilateral A, B, C, um, D has both reflect, reflection and rotation symmetry. What type of quadrilateral could A, B, C, D be? Show or explain your reasoning. So remember a quadrilateral has four sides, okay? So we need a four-sided figure that has both reflection and rotation symmetry. 
Um, and then your learning targets for today was that you could describe the rotations that take a figure onto itself. So that is rotation symmetry. So you could describe rotation symmetries. And don't forget about your lesson 16 um, practice problems to check your understanding. That's going to be on page 114 to 117.